Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and in today's video we'll have a look at the GFS, the GM, the Eastern Drift, the GFS Ensembles and we'll also have a look at the UK Met Office run as well. Now I have been looking at of course at the potential for seeing some really quite cold weather to, uh, toward the last third of December. That theme is continuing and we're seeing the models flip-flopping around between different scenarios. They all look reasonably cold um, but there is still massive amount of uncertainty. Today we'll have a look at the GFS run which for its six said run that we're going to be having a look at it actually goes really quite snowy across Christmas Day through Christmas Eve um, as we do see low pressure undercutting the high pressure block. So have a look at that in a minute. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow on Twitch as well, the link's in the description. One thing I do want to say before we get into the video, is that over the next week, I am going to be very busy, um, so I may not be able to get a forecast video out every single day leading up to Christmas. However, I have got some pre-recorded videos that we uh, that will be publishing uh, scattered across the next week. I still should be able to get up some forecasts, but maybe not every single day. So I'll have some filler videos uh, to be posting about some historic colder events as well that I'll have a look at. So we do first have a look at the GFS. You can see we have high pressure building up from the south. Now it's not going to be completely taking over for another day or so. We still have bit of low pressure in the north, but the high pressure really does take control. Probably around Friday, uh, we're going to be seeing the high pressure completely dominate the weather, and we're going to be starting to see an inversion. So by next week, temperatures towards the surface will only be mid to single digits, and potentially around freezing overnight. But the thing we've got to keep an eye on is what's happening with this high pressure. How far northwards does it go, and its orientation? We've seen over the last sort of three or four or five days, it flip-flopping all around, from going to beating the east scenarios to toppling over, giving us really no proper cold weather at all. And we're still seeing both of those scenarios possible. However, towards the Christmas period now, we're starting to see it evolve a little bit better, and we're starting to potentially see hints of an undercut from a low pressure system but not an Atlantic onslaught. And where that boundary occurs between the low pressure undercutting and the high pressure block with the colder air, we could be seeing snow quite widely along that boundary. And that is what we're seeing on this GFS 6 ad run. So you run through, you can see towards the 20th of December, so early next week, we are starting to pull in a bit of a chillier northly, northeasterly wind. The high pressure is now firmly over Greenland, and we have a big low pressure system out in the Atlantic. Now, towards Christmas Eve, uh, or the 23rd into Christmas Eve, we actually see a low pressure system move through. It does bring some milder air for a time. However, we've got a big cold block to our east. And as we head through Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, you can see that high pressure towards Greenland and Scandinavia starts to strengthen. And we see this low pressure slide through the southwest. That bitterly cold air wraps around the low, and we go into the freezer for Christmas Eve. And overnight, Christmas Day to Christmas Eve, we would be seeing heavy snow on the back edge of this low pressure system. Now, this scenario is very like Storm Darcy that we saw earlier this year in early February, where we saw low pressure system move through with bitterly cold air wrapping around it. Now, that went into a, a week-long sort of cold spell. On this latest year, this, it goes into a couple of days cold spell as that cold air does sink southeastwards. But it would be bitterly cold through the 20s or overnight 25th into the 26th of December through the 27th, 28th and only by probably the 29th when we start to see westerly winds move back in. But even then, right towards the end of the run, we're still seeing a big block towards Scandinavia that easily could be sending this cold air back in if it did re-strengthen. So you can see the slightly different scenarios are cropping up within the models, but still cold evolutions look quite likely. And we'll have to see how it does playing towards the end of this month. It certainly is playing out very interesting, more interesting end of the year to, in the festive period than we've had for many, uh, many years, I must say, in terms of actually having real possibility of seeing at least some colder weather and potentially wintry weather. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS precipitation charts now don't take these too literally i have said over the last few days i won't go into depth on any precipitation charts because we are too far out but i just want to just show this for just what sort of scenario we could be seeing now as we head towards 
Christmas Eve, you can see it's reasonably dry, and then we see low pressure pushing in through the southwest on Christmas Day. Quite a soggy start to Christmas Day. However, that cold air just to our northeast is wrapping around the low, and by 9pm, readily turning to snow across the Midlands, central southern England by midnight, and heavy snowing through the early hours of Boxing Day before eventually clearing by lunchtime Boxing Day, but seeing good 12 hours potentially of snow there before seeing snow showers move in off that easterly wind. So, yeah, just shows you the potential scenario. And again, if we have a look at snow depth, um, if we do run through, you can see potential for a few centimetres of snow through Christmas Day into Christmas, uh, uh, Christ, uh, into Boxing Day, sorry. So, yeah, just the potential, of course. Don't take these too literally by any means. This very likely will not come off exactly like this. But once again, it's, we can just see, even if we don't get that bitterly cold block completely taking over, and we do see these slider lows come in, depending on the exact positioning, we could still see some wintriness, perhaps, through the festive period. Now, if we do have a look at the GM, see that it does compare. Now, the overnight runs, midnight runs, did go cold, uh, sorry, did go much milder in terms of ensemble members. Now, this is the midnight run from the GM, and if we see how it does evolve, you can see generally high pressure is in control over the next few days. Similar to the GFS, that high pressure does still hang around as we head up to the Christmas period, but we do see low pressure trying to slide in, turning things a bit milder and actually you can see towards christmas day we're actually in a mild westerly wind that block is still there just to our northeast but not really bringing us anything cold now i did say midnight runs pretty much most of them did evolve to something much milder so it'd be very interesting to see how the gm run does evolve over the next day or so whether it was just a blip of a run because all of the six said runs the gfs operation run as we just saw and it's on some members which i'll show you in a minute have trended colder once again um i did see a lot of um tweets this morning um from people posting about the midnight run saying here we go um, the models completely overestimated the potential cold potential and we're just going to be going mild um, or at least not quite as cold for the festive period but as ever with these cold scenarios they do flip-flop massively so again we will not know exactly what's going to be happening until maybe only two three four days out because of how marginal these things can be and how much it can change especially with big high pressure blocks in short periods of time so we do have a look at the East India F again, midnight run, see how it does evolve. You can see again high pressure ticking over. And then as we head towards the Christmas period, that high pressure, similar to the GFS, actually holds strong towards Greenland. And we see something very similar to the GFS with that high pressure over Greenland, and we see a bit of an easterly wind. Now, this East India F run has slight different orientation which means we're pulling up more of a south southeasterly wind which is more of a milder air mass but still be chilly towards the surface for christmas day whereas the gfs had that block slightly stronger and this bitterly cold air towards scandinavia and eastern europe was flooding into the uk so i said the general pressure charts and anomaly charts might be showing something very very similar like in these two runs but you can see that actually very different scenarios all the surface with the air masses because of slight shifts in orientation and that's something we're gonna have to keep a really close eye on over the next week or so um, as it could make a massive difference between something just generally cool maybe even mild um, or something very cold and maybe wintry so we do have a look at uh, the GFS ensembles you can see big scatter around the last third of December Pretty mild at the moment, but of course we're going to be seeing that uh, inversion kicking over the next few days. And then we start to see the first colder runs start to appear around the 21st, 22nd of December. One thing I must say in the longer term is we're starting to see precipitation rise. So there is strong support for lower pressure, whether that's in from the east or in from the west. Low pressure does look likely. Um, and of course, as you saw by the GFS and the eastern, even the ECMWF, we're seeing that undercut of low pressure. So even though it is going potentially more of a low pressure influence, it is still cold. So again, it's one of the ways the ensemble don't quite show exactly how it's evolving. But again, one thing is that most of these ensemble members between the 21st and the 30th of December go cold at some point. 
only a few of these ensemble members don't show the upper air temperatures getting below minus five for a couple of days, um, at least um, for a couple. Yeah, so only a couple of them don't show that at all. Again, it's all about time frame. You can see the operational run goes bitterly cold around the 26th to the 28th of December. Other runs do it a little bit earlier. Other runs do it a bit later. So again, all does depend on that block. But you can still see general trend is it for, to be cooler around the Christmas period and beyond. But there are still quite a few milder outliers. And of course, there are some bitterly cold runs. Of course, if we wanted anything particularly wintry, we'd be looking at the minus five line. And there are still plenty of ensemble members around that or below that. And we'll have to see again how it does evolve over the next few days. If we have a look at new, new snow depth, you see still quite a few snow spikes around the Christmas period. So... We can't rule it out at this stage, but by no means is it a guarantee. Dew points, you can see generally are around freezing from around the 22nd, 23rd. So it does look like we will be in a cool air mass, whether it's bitterly cold or whether it's just a bit of an inversion where temperatures are reasonably cool, but precipitation won't be um, plenty. And if it is, uh, uh, if there is precipitation, it most likely will be rain. But with the low dew points, it does mean it is a reasonably cold air mass, so frost will be likely. Um, and again, if we do see major precipitation with low dew points and the colder air mass, we're likely to be seeing potentially some snow. And again, two meter temperatures, you can see generally around the 22nd, 23rd, two meter temperatures looking average around four or five degrees. Cold on some members down to one or two, milder ones maybe six, seven, eight degrees. So still up for grabs at this stage. Doesn't look like at this stage we're going into the absolute freezer, like we are still seeing on some outlier runs and were being hinted maybe a few days ago. Doesn't look like it's going to the absolute freezer, but we don't need it to go into the absolute freezer to be getting a wintry or at least seasonable Christmas with frost, colder conditions, and potentially some snow around for some. Now, if we do finish up for this video, have a look at the UK Met Office run, which only goes out to five days, so we can only look out to the 20th of December. You can see patchy rain moving in to the north over the course of today, but it is clearing slowly through this evening across many northern areas as that high pressure does build in for all. So by tomorrow afternoon, generally really quite dry. And then we just continue with the dry signal. Nothing major at all um, in terms of precipitation. Really dry, maybe some patchy drizzle here and there under some trapped cloud, but it should be fairly pleasant. If we have a look at the upper air temperatures, you can see that by uh, by this afternoon, 11 or 12 in the south. Overnight tonight, mid-single digits. And by Thursday afternoon, we're starting to see potential 9, 10 degrees, slowly cooling down. By Friday, temperatures only 6 or 7 degrees, feeling a bit chillier and especially much colder in the north. By Saturday, once again, around freezing or a couple of degrees above in the north, only 6, 7, 8 degrees in the south. And by Sunday, widespread frost overnight, especially in the north, around the centre of the low. In the south, maybe 3 or 4 degrees. And by Sunday afternoon, widely only 4 or 5 degrees. Towards coastal areas, when we see a bit more of a sea breeze, mixing air a bit more, we may see 6 or 7, but still looking really chilly and through Monday. Again, a more widespread frost across Scotland. So it does look like over the next five days, Quite a few frosts, especially in the north, but chillier temperatures for all um, at times as we see the inversion. But it's looking very, very dry um, over the next five days. But as I said, we'll have to see what happens up towards Christmas. Christmas is now um, 10 days away. So within the next two or three days, it will be becoming into the reliable time frame. So we'll have a much better idea what's going to be happening probably by Friday, Saturday, Sunday time. So make sure you stay tuned for that. As I said, I'm busy over the next week, so I may not be getting a forecast video out every day, but I hopefully will be getting out at least a few over the next week. And of course, I will supplement them with some other videos um, that I have pre-recorded. So make sure you do check those out. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.